Hey, hey, party people, welcome back. Today, we're continuing with our flat series, and I'm going to teach you in this video how to draw a flat from an existing garment. And you're thinking, no, Zoe, I want to do the other way around. I want to design using flats. I get it. But this is an important learning step in the process. If you have no idea what I'm talking about and you still think I'm talking about shoes, then check out the other videos in the flat series and I have their links in the box below. The materials we need today are garment. We need the flats template that we made in the last video. I just took half of what I drew, scanned it in, threw it into Photoshop, mirror copy pasted it, put it together, printed it out, and here we go. And I printed it fairly big because I want to have plenty of room to draw in all the tiny little details. You need tracing paper, super skinny mechanical pencil, my trusty erasers, artist tape, and clear ruler. Fold your tracing paper in half. Draw your center line on the underside so that no matter what you erase up here, you will still continue to have your center line. Line that up, tape it down. For your practice garment, you're going to lay down your garment as flatly on your table as possible. And if you are drawing a fitted garment, as in something that molds to your body and not just drapes loosely, it's just going to be impossible to get everything to lay flat. The collar pops up because our necks come forward on our trunks. They don't sit precisely on top of our shoulders straight up and down like this. And so in order to fit around the collar properly, the collar is going to sit towards the front. This part of the garment, it molds around the breast and the armpit and so it's not gonna lay flat. These parts, these are boxy, uh, loose pieces, and so these pieces will lay flat. So lay it down as flatly as possible on your table, as neatly as possible. And let's figure out the outside proportions first. First of all, here is the width of our collar, and our shoulder is much narrower than the width of our collar. Look at this armhole. The trunk of our shirt is about three times the length of that armhole. That armhole is about as wide as one half of the body up here. Not down here where it's wide. The shirt flares to fit over a woman's hips, but up here, this, this makes kind of a square. Let's start with our collar because it fits snugly around our necks and then we can build our proportions from there. If I were to draw a 3D collar around a neck on a figure, I would make sure that the drawing wraps around the neck. But this is a flat, and it lays pretty triangularly, so I'm going to draw that triangle. And then that shoulder is sitting right there. And if this is the width of the shoulder, or if this is the width of the collar, and the shoulder is much narrower, I'm going to say that armhole comes in right there. And then the armhole curves out, down, and into the armpit. Three times the width of the armhole is here, and here, and here. So there's the front hem of the shirt. See this, and this, that, and that. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay. And then this angles out. It's here and then it flares out over the hips. And it's got a slight shirt tail hem. 
Shirt tail hem hems are the ones that curve high on the sides and low in the front and the back. So very gentle slope. And then the sleeve. The sleeve doesn't come right off the, the shoulder angle like this, but slopes down at the seam. So I'm gonna do that too. Now this armhole madness, we're gonna pretend that this is sitting neatly tucked in like this. And we have this armhole. We're gonna drape up like this, and then this sleeve is gonna come behind. So here we go, we have this drape up. And the back of the sleeve is gonna start about there. This sleeve can be drawn, extended out like this, but what many people prefer is to fold it in like so. Some people think it's to include this house pocket detail, but you know, you're supposed to have a back flat anyway, and if you have your shirt flat like this, then you can just include that information in the back flat. Now, a lot of people prefer it like this because it just looks nice and it formats more easily when you're putting these shirt flats in your line sheet, in your spec pack, etc, etc. What are line sheets? I'll give you a whole video on line sheets. How's that? All right. So I like this folded. I folded it so that this line is parallel to the center front. Now, where does the fold happen? So the fold happens kind of just under the armpit point, which is just under the top of the pocket, which is, you know, in between these two buttons. So it's all about proportions. This is gonna be about, that's where that is. My pocket's gonna sit just over that about here. And then this is going to come down about here, parallel to center of front. This is going to come in, tapering a little bit. This angle is less than 90 degrees. So one armhole, one armhole here. So right where that second armhole length was, you know, one armhole, two armhole, three armhole. That's gonna sit there like that. Boom, here's the cuff. And there we go. That should match that like that. And now you have the basic shape for your shirt. Now let's draw the back. Not the back flat, but the back of the garment that we can see from the front, such as the back of the collar, collar stand, and the back of the shirt. So this is straight across the back. We can see the collar stand back here like so. And then on the bottom, the shirt tail hem is a little bit longer in the back than the front. So we're gonna see that too. Now let's add some design details and seams. There's a yoke here. So it, this is about a third of the collar length here. One, two, three. So about here. And we've got our little pocket. Hey, let's do our center front pocket first. It's a pretty small pocket. A typical five point. And then we have our cuff and our house placket. 
It's called the house placket because this little top stitching that comes standard with a lot of these placards looks like a little house. This coming up like so. And a little house. And then let's put all our buttons down. So we're here already. Okay, let's add that curved hem. And we have our button with a horizontal buttonhole. We have a button here with a vertical buttonhole. Pay attention to those things. This flat is for construction purposes, and so you need to get those little details right. We have a collar stand, and we have a button with a horizontal buttonhole. And then we have two, four, six buttons down the center front placket with horizontal, with uh, vertical buttonholes. We have our collar stand, horizontal, and then let's space out our buttons. This is one of those things that's so much easier to do in Illustrator. So, do, do, do. How did I do that so fast? All right, so this one is kind of just above the corner of the cuff. This one is right around the middle of the pocket. This one, the spacing is really small. Bing, 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 fill in the gaps. They all have horizontal buttonholes. Hey guys, what's the difference between a button and a snap? A button has buttonholes, snaps do not. And then we are gonna add our buttons on, on the corners of our collar with vertical buttonholes. What's the difference between a button up and a button down shirt? The styles are almost identical, but button downs have their collars buttoned down and button ups do not. Yeah, it's really that simple. Button down shirts have a button down collar, button up shirts, don't. Designers, when you are spacing your buttons, think about how the neckline is going to look when the buttons are undone. So maybe you're going to undo just one button to go to work and then you're going to pop open another one to go on a date. What is that going to look like? Check your spacing. You know, maybe you don't want to have too much gap. But then at the same time, you don't want to look really uptight or feel really uncomfortable. And right? so think about those buttons. And yeah, you don't need one at the hem. All right, so we're here. We have the collar, the collar stand, the yoke, the sleeve, the house placket, the pocket. We have the placket. We have the shape. All the things. What are we missing? We're missing top stitching. All of the top stitching. So we have quarter inch top stitching on either side of the center front placket. We have quarter inch top stitching around the collar, around the armhole, around the cuff. Well, you're not gonna see the side seams on the flat. Oh, but you are gonna see this cute little reinforcement tab. So let's draw that. You're going to have edge stitching around the collar stand around the yoke, along the yoke. What's edge stitching? Literally top stitching that's on the edge. I mean, that's not even eighth of an inch. It's just seriously along the edge as close as possible. You have edge stitching along the placket and in this little fun shape. And you have double needle top stitching along the top of the cuff where it joins the shirt. Around your chest patch pocket, when you make a patch pocket, you fold the top over, fold it over again, and then you sew this down so you have a nice reinforced hem. And then you sew these really skinny little triangles here so that you have reinforced corners for your patch pocket in case you want to be awesome and carry around your calculator or multiple pens in your pocket. And you're going to put that all in here with your teeny tiny little pen. Some people like to do this with a dotted line. Some people like to do this with a skinny line. 
There is no tried and true only correct way as long as it's clear as to what you're doing. Some people like to go in and take a fatter, softer pencil and reinforce the silhouette so that it really pops. I like to do that if I'm doing a fancier presentation than this tracing paper. So we're here now. Let's pretend I drew in all the top stitching. And you're going to fold it in half. And you're going to draw the other side. Right, and there is your shirt flat. Now that you know how to draw a basic shirt, then you can go and explore and say, hey, I want to do a drop shoulder shirt. I want to do a button up with no buttons on the collar. Maybe I'm going to pretend it was four years ago and do a peplum, whatever. Okay? But you can do all those things because you're the designer and you're going to go have fun with it. When I look at this now, when your pattern maker looks at this, they're going to say, hey, this is a button down shirt for a woman. It has a narrow shoulder, a full but not overly blue sawney sleeve with your typical uh, cuff and house placket. It's got a shirt tail hem. It's got one patch pocket. Really, really easy to read. And that's the goal. Easy to read and uh, specific about all the construction details. Questions. Ask me all the questions. Drop me a comment below. If you found this video informative, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button because I'm going to make more videos on how to draw flats, how to improve flats, how to design with flats. I can't think of anything else to say, so I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you next time.